uh, with the summit on climate change taking place just two weeks from now, I want to provide an update on where things stand as of now. As you know, the Secretary General is just back from a visit to the Arctic, where he saw firsthand the impacts caused by climate change. As he has said, he wishes all leaders could visit the region to see for themselves what is happening there. We have a very serious problem on our hand that is gaining momentum even more rapidly than we feared. The Secretary General's visit to the Arctic reminds us that addressing climate change is not optional or something that could be postponed indefinitely. A failure to take action will have serious consequences, not just for polar bears in the Arctic, but for people on every continent and in every country. With reduced ice cover, the scramble for the North and its resources is on. The environmental, economic and geopolitical implications will be substantial. At the local level, citizen communities around the world are already grappling with how to reduce emissions and better adapt to the impacts of climate change. But in the climate negotiations themselves and in the international political arena, progress has been much too slow. The Secretary General has continually urged leaders to step up action so that we can realize the benefits of a fair, equitable, comprehensive and effective global treaty that addresses what is one of the most fundamental challenges the world is facing. From his first months in the office, the Secretary General has been working to move the issue of climate change to the top of the international agenda. The upcoming summit is intended to provide political momentum at the highest level to accelerate progress toward a deal in Copenhagen. The full engagement of world leaders is absolutely essential. There are now only 15 negotiating days left before Copenhagen begins. All states are invited. This is not just for eight countries or 20, but for 192. We will hear addresses at the opening from leaders addressing key countries, including highly vulnerable states, large emitters of greenhouse gases, fast emerging developing countries, and yet others working to avoid deforestation. After the opening session, the leaders will engage in roundtable discussions that will be co-chaired by heads of state's governments themselves. These discussions will be for leaders only and are designed to facilitate candid discussion to potentially help resolve some of the key roadblocks in the negotiations. The four climate change envoys of the Secretary General, as well as five executive heads of UN system agencies, will provide support to the roundtables. The basis for the roundtable discussions is a background paper that is posted on the UN Climate Change Summit website uh, at UN.org under climate change slash 2009 summit. Uh, leaders will focus on five issues that are central to the negotiations while framing their discussions in the context of how we can move toward a lower emissions, climate resilient global economy. We expect the summit will enable leaders to provide much needed guidance to their negotiating teams and will result in increased political momentum at the highest level in support of a fair, effective and ambitious deal in Copenhagen. There will be no formal declaration at the end of the summit, as this is not a formal negotiation. The Secretary General will release a chair summary and meet with the press immediately after the closing plenary. The next few weeks, two weeks to be precise, are crucial for galvanizing action on climate change. The summit is the flagship event bringing together top-level leadership from every country. Other fora, such as the G20, are also taking place this month. However, these gatherings do not include all actors. We need a global solution for a global problem. A number of other events uh, will be taking place just before and just after the summit here in New York. In particular, EOSIS will have a summit-level meeting on the 21st, and uh, the Secretary General will be convening a high-level uh, event on reduced uh, 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 emissions from deforestation and land degradation on the 23rd in the afternoon. On a closing note, uh, the UN is working uh, to make sure that the summit is climate neutral, so there will be no net increase in emissions due to the summit. The UN, led by its Environment Management Group, has developed a methodology to estimate emissions caused by travel and office energy use. These emissions will be offset by purchasing certified emission reduction credits uh, from a clean development mechanism project and will cover the travel by heads of states and two aides to New York for the summit. Thank you.